Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Today, I'm gonna show you how I set up my bikes. So, I just got this brand new Canyon Spectral 125. Um, and, you know, while I'm in my shop, I can set up the brake levers, the dropper posts, all of that. But now I need to set up the suspension and I need to actually get on the bike to do that. So I'm gonna show you how I set sag um, for both the fork and the rear shock. And then I'll talk about kind of all the little adjustments. Um, so high speed compression, low speed compression, and the fork has everything. So it's got high speed compression, low speed compression, uh, high speed rebound, low speed rebound. So it's gonna take me a little while to play around with things. Even though I know what each thing does, it's like different on how it's gonna feel on the trail. But thankfully those adjustments are just little click dials that you can do on the fly. And then with the rear shock, it's relatively limited. You basically have the little lever and then you have rebound adjust and you have the initial air that you put in. So I have the shock pump here, so we'll talk about that. Um, this one doesn't have the compression setting on here, which is, I believe, low speed compression. Um, from what I hear, I could pry this cap off and change it and put it back on. Some shocks come with an adjustment, but um, they, what I'm told is they set this at the factory to work well with the frame. So that's, so I'll probably just leave it alone unless I really feel like I need to change it. So let's get into the first thing you want to do and that is setting sag. And these O-rings are what we're going to need for that. So if you've ever wondered what these O-rings are on your shocks, they're so you can do a few things. One, set up the initial um, sag, right, front and rear. And then another thing you can use them for is once you set up everything up, if you're out riding on the trail and you're doing jumps and whatever you like to do, and you see that this thing is pushed all the way off, <laughs> then you know that you want to mess with your settings and um, that you're bottoming out. And the opposite of that is if you go ride a bunch of gnarly stuff and this is only here, then you're not actually using your suspension how you should. You want this thing to be near the end but not pushed off. So that's just one of those things. Same with the fork. When you're done riding a good gnarly session, you want to see this thing up near the top, but you don't really want to see it all the way up. You'll know when you bottom out just because it's a kind of a harsh feeling when you land. But uh, yeah, you, you want to use your travel, but you don't want to bottom out a lot. It's going to happen, but you just don't want it to be like a regular occurrence. And that's how you know your suspension, at least your initial compression settings are set up correctly. So um, we're going to use these O-rings to set sag. So the first thing you're going to do is push them all the way down on the fork, all the way forward on the rear shock, and then I'm gonna get on the bike and show you. So for now, I'm gonna set this stuff down. I have the O-rings in the right position and I have this fence right here, which is really important because what I wanna do is get on the bike, lean myself against the fence, but you don't want any part of the bike touching the fence. You wanna set your pedals parallel there's a playground right behind this thing so if you hear kids that's why <laughs> um i could probably move but we'll see um so set this way pedals parallel right cranks parallel to the ground and then you want to stand up and then get off and then once you do that You want to look at your o-ring so i'm just going to grab the camera and show you so i want them at about 25 percent so this i need a little bit more air because i want this to be more like that and then this one pretty close maybe a tiny bit more air 
but not a ton, but you basically want them at 25%. Another thing that you want to do, if for some reason these aren't moving very much, is you might want to get on the bike again. Somebody at a shop told me this because all suspension is different. I rode this over here, so it's all like kind of loose and lubed up. Um, but if your bike's been sitting for a while or you're on the show floor at a shop or whatever, you want to get on it and bounce up and down a few times to kind of cycle the shocks and get them smooth. Then get off, slide these down. And then you don't want to bounce when you do this part. You want to be as smooth as you can. <laughs> and then take a look. So yeah, I want to add a little to the rear. And I think the front's looking okay. I am using my microphone, but <laughs> I'm going to move away from the screaming kids. Like one kid is just going crazy. Like angry or something. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> so I'm going to go over here i want the sun coming at the right angle and hopefully on the other side of this wall over here yeah that looks good let's do that <laughs> okay to put air in you want to take this little cover off every shock is different but it's usually pretty convenient right on the side like that then you want to thread your shock pump on all right and you'll see that the air will go into the shock and raise the pressure, or into the pump and raise the pressure. So it just went up. It's a little below 200, so I'm going to put a few pumps in there. Get it above 200. Maybe try to get it up to about 225. Right? And then you want to take it off. You're gonna hear a little air come out, but that's just air coming out of the pump. It's not air coming out of the shock, so you don't have to worry too much about it. It's kind of alarming. You're like, oh no, I just let all the air out, but that's not really the case. So we'll go ahead, put that back on. You definitely wanna take the pump off before you go and retest the egg. I moved this all the way forward, so let's retest this egg. Okay, I retested it. It's better, but it's still not like where I want it. I kind of want it more up here. So I'm going to add a little more air, but this is basically how you want to go through and get your suspension set up. It takes a little while, but getting your sag set up properly is the first step. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is this lever over here. In this case, down is the open position. You want it in the open position when you're setting sag. So make sure you do that. You don't want it in the pedal position or stiffer position. You want it in the open position. So there you have it. Uh, let's talk about some of the other settings. Okay, so there's compression and there's rebound and they're kind of the opposite. So what is compression? Well. It's basically saying how much force is needed to make the shock activate. It's also, you know, going to determine how quickly it ramps up, so on and so forth. So compression is when you hit something, you know, that movement is compression. And then the re opposite of that, how quickly it comes back, is rebound. Now this fork <laughs> has a bunch of settings in that regard so once I have my sag set up right now I want to set up my compression there's two settings here this outside knob the blue one is let's see it even says right on here this is my high speed compression so what is high speed compression versus low speed compression well high speed compression is going to be like it has nothing to do with how fast I'm riding my bike. And I think a lot of people get that confused. It's like, oh, high speed is the speed at which you're riding your bike. And it has nothing to do with that. It's at, it's, it has to do with the, the speed at which your fork compresses. So the high speed is going to be like rock hits. 
and sudden hits that you have on the trail, the really bumpy stuff. So I generally will run my high speed compression a little bit lower because I want that plushness when I hit things. But I won't go all the way low. I'll go a few clicks um, to stiffness. And I'll, I'll, again, once I'm on the trail, I can play around with it. And the cool thing is I can just turn the dial so I can be like, oh, it's a little rough. Or, oh, it's too bouncy or too squishy, right? So I can play around with it. And then the low speed is for, especially for somebody like me or if you like to jump a lot or press into berms and stuff like that. Low speed is going to be the slower pressing into the suspension. So like we like to preload. So when we're coming up on a jump, we push down and preload the bike and then spring up. Or if you're going over, you know, rollers or through like G outs and stuff. I want the bike to be stiffer in that situation. So I add more low speed compression and I like it to feel pretty stable, pretty stiff underneath me when I want to make the bike do something, when I push it down and things like that. So low speed, you can kind of think of it as your pumping compression or whatever. If you want your bike to pump better and you want to have more control over it and you don't want it to just absorb everything when you try to push into it, then you want to set your low speed to higher. If you want your bike to feel really squishy when you're pushing it around, which maybe some people do, then run it lower, right? So high speed compression, hitting bumps, hitting rocks, hitting roots, things like that. High speed compression, or sorry, low speed compression, pumping, pushing into the bike. You want it to feel more stable, more stiff. Um, on the rear, I don't have that option. That's what this little thing, some of the shocks have that option. Um, and what I'm told is that Canyon, with the way this bike is designed, has this set ideally for this platform and the suspension. So I'm gonna trust that they know what they're doing and leave it. But if I wanna increase it or decrease it, I can always pop this cap off, change it, and put this cap back on, or I can get the little conversion kit and get the little blue dial knob on here. So. But same thing, if you do have compression adjustment on your rear shock, it's generally just low speed compression set. You know, you want it to feel relatively firm on the trail and then the shock is gonna do whatever it wants to do for that high speed stuff, right? Um, now, let's talk about rebound. Again, it's a, a little weird. The fork has high speed rebound and low speed rebound. Turn it this way a little bit, or maybe I should just flip the bike around. Yep, sounds like a plan. <laughs> and there's a cover on here, and I take this cover off. And there's two, two dials. Now, I've never had rebound where I can adjust both of them. So this is another thing I'm gonna have to play around with a bunch. But basically, the high speed rebound is going to be when you're further into the travel of your fork. So I heard two thirds, whatever. That's when that's going to take effect. And then the low speed rebound is going to be more in that top third, how quickly it rebounds. So in my opinion, I'm like, well, if my fork is way deep into the compression, I want that high speed rebound to be a little quicker because if you're going to hit more bumps, like if your rebound is too slow, you're going to be into, into your suspension when you get to the next bump. And then that's, you're not going to have much suspension to catch that next bump or it's going to be really firm when you're further in there and you're going to feel it more or whatever. So you want your rebound to be quicker when it comes to the high speed rebound so you can catch, you know, the next bump if you're over a bunch of chattery stuff, right? The low speed rebound is going to be for when I'm jumping and stuff. Like I want to compress and then I want that fork to come back to me. So, and it's going to be based on how much air pressure I put in here. Um, Fox will have 
uh, chart. They actually have it right there on the back of the fork to kind of give you a starting point. And so this is something I'll have to play around with. Um, I've already got it relatively set up to the way that I want it. But um, once I get on a trail and start riding, I can play with these things and get them to where I want them. And again, the reason why they're like on the fly adjustments is because you want to change them depending on the trail. Like here in Minnesota, you know, most stuff's gonna be flow. I'm not gonna be in these really gnarly situations. But if I go up to Duluth, right, which has got some more gnarly, rocky downhill stuff and things like that, I'll want to tweak a few things and, and set the bike up for that kind of trail. Or if I travel out west and go do some, you know, like Trestle Bike Park like I did a few years ago. Um, things where, you know, like Trestle Bike Park, where I'm going to be going a lot faster, right? So there's one more cool thing about this bike that I want to talk about, and that is the flip chip. So let's get into that. So this is the flip chip, and it doesn't look like much, but you can see this is oval, and that the bolt is to the rear, and I can literally take the, loosen the bolt, flip these little aluminum deals, I don't even know what you call them, <laughs> um, but you flip them the other way, and that'll move this bolt forward, which raises the bottom bracket and steepens the head angle. So those are the two primary things that'll actually make the seat angle. Let's see if it goes up, the seat angle will go a little bit steeper. So for like really gnarly out west trails, you want this low setting. Um, but I wanna show you something. I just did a video on how to manual the other day, but I was on my DJ bike. Full suspension bikes, especially with 29er wheels, are harder to manual um, and they have a little bit longer chain stay than a DJ bike does so that you got to compensate for that but bottom bracket height plays a big role and when you flip this I can raise the bottom bracket by eight inches so I'm gonna go do a couple of manual attempts and show you how hard it is to pull up the front end of this bike so as I come around here, oh, it is really hard to pull up the front end, right? And it's in its low setting. So I really have to work to get that front wheel up there, right? And full suspension bikes are harder to manual, they're harder to keep manual and so on because everything's kind of moving around on you and I obviously need practice but I'm gonna flip this chip and show you or tell you <laughs> that it's easier to get the front wheel up when the bottom bracket's a little higher. So there you go that's the difference so it's it's very subtle here but you have to realize there's all this linkages, so it actually makes bigger differences throughout the rest of the bike. And so now I'm eight millimeters higher in the bottom bracket and a 70, not 70, what it's just BMX, a 64.5 degree head angle instead of a 64 degree head, head angle. Um, so yeah, let's go try the manual. So I haven't tried the manual yet here. So you'll get to see my first impression. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. I was a little light because I just wanted to be ready for it. But yeah, it comes up much easier, much less effort. I wouldn't say a whole lot, but it's definitely different. Make sure the bike's in gear here. All right. So, I obviously have some work to do. <laughs> That's right. There we go. Okay. So, I found that spot. 
I'm not wearing a helmet. Um, I am covering the rear brake, but uh, if I'm gonna actually practice this, I gotta get a helmet on. So um, there's definitely a difference between the um, low setting and high setting. Um, the other thing I noticed, just because I've been steering around, is it's a little quicker handling too. It definitely, <laughs> it definitely is more quicker, more agile handling. Yep. So I personally am gonna like the, um, the high setting for most of the riding that I do. Um, and only if I go out west or go somewhere, Fruta again, you know, maybe Sedona. Um, even when I go to Bentonville, I'll probably keep it in the high setting. Bentonville is a lot more flow and jumping and things like that than it is, you know, Palmer downhill stuff. So we'll see. Um, Bentonville will also give me an opportunity to play with a lot of the settings on this bike. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. And if you're wondering what pedals I got, <laughs> I got green, <laughs> these uh, one-up pedals, which kind of cracks me up because I was like, I don't know, the greens don't match at all. <laughs> I also, when I set this bike up tubeless, which I did, I added green anodized, um, what do you call these? <laughs> tension caps, whatever, uh, the deals that hold your valve onto your rim. Yep. So um, there you have it. That is how I set up a bike. And, you know, I have to play around with it some more and, and really get it dialed to how I like it. But as of right now, because I did my um, compression settings, air settings, figured out the sag and all of that, from here on out, it's just going to be a matter of clicking the rebounds, adjusting the high speed and low speed compression, high speed and low speed rebound, things like that, because my sag is all set the way that I want it. So there you have it. I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.